Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of The Joe and Jack Show. On today's show, we'll talk with Notre Dame women's lacrosse player Catherine McManus and welcome to campus the Director of Athlete Performance at Under Armour, Paul Winspur. But first, to get things started, here are your hosts, Notre Dame Vice President and Director of Athletics, Jack Swarbrick, and Notre Dame Captain and Starting Linebacker, Joe Schmidt. Joe, good to be with you. Good to be with you, too. The, the intro reflects the reality <laughs> that I'm the undercard now. I was going to say, I went from not even being a part of the introduction to now being the uh, the front name, which is a little ridiculous to yeah. me. Oh, it, just, it just reflects the fact that I'm. it's so getting on my nerves to have people come up to me every week and say, <laughs> Joe's really good on that show. That's, uh, those Wait are the, a minute, it's my show that he's good no, on. No, they, no, those they, are the four or five people that I continue uh, to pay off uh, each and every no, week, I, I including got, Jack. So. <laughs> I got an email from a guy in California that I've known for 20 years from Northern California. Um, and he's been tuning in? T- yeah, he's, he says he never misses m- misses an episode. Uh, and, and he said, uh, gosh, Joe is really good. I've been doing this show for eight years. I never heard from the guy. <laughs> well, thank you uh, to to who has not uh, has not been named on the show yet, but uh, Michael Lynch. Michael so Lynch. Michael, a shout out there to you. you. Shout out to Michael Lynch for uh, for saying good things about me and not not having to be paid for for that. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, <laughs> Michael's got a Stanford connection too. I was trying not to give him too much credit. But uh, that's, I got you. Uh, that's, I got you. That, that, that's okay. <laughs> um, well, um, coming off a trip to Death Valley, yeah, was. Uh, was not what we had hoped for, and uh, I think we all felt walking away from there that we let one get away. Yeah, you know, it was uh, it was it was it was a great trip for our team. It was a great opportunity for our team uh, to go into a hostile environment um, in um, you know at, in weather conditions that weren't you know were not pristine, um, and really get a win that we thought and we felt we should we should get. Um, and so for us, it was just disappointing um, and unacceptable, really, uh, to you know to go in there and lose that game. And that's the way we feel. So uh, the biggest part about this week now is is trying to move past that um, and use that that th- those negative emotions and turn them into something positive. Hopefully this Saturday and then in the preparation for Saturday. Um, and the great part is we've had a great week of prep uh, because of it. You know, guys have been flying around working on things that uh, you know on extra things and. And if, and if we continue to use that as, as, as sort of a catalyst to work even harder, I think that it can be, uh, you know, a positive and we can find some silver lining and a loss there in, uh, in Death Valley. Yeah, no question. And I know from being in practice yesterday, it was a great practice. I, I don't want to spend too much time on that game, but, it, you know, it did uh, – defensively, we violated one of Coach's principles, which was start fast. Yeah. So when, when that happens, what's what's the dynamic? Is it something about the routine? Is it Can you put your finger on it? It just happens. You know, sometimes, it, you know, it just happens. And, and we we harp on it so much. You know, Coach has the has the four – you know, the four pillars of winning, four quarters of winning um, – and and the first one of those is start fast and and you really do have to start fast and if you allow a team especially a team of Clemson's caliber to get up on you 14 points early um, it becomes incredibly hard to win the football game. Uh, you know, I, I think if you look at, you know, analytically uh, and, this, and statistically, the chances you have of coming back from a 14-point deficit in any game are, are not good. Um, and, and so when you think about the preparation, the week leading into Clemson, I thought it was, uh, it was superb. I thought guys were on point. Um, and then, in, you know, the days of travel, getting there, I thought our, you know, our support staff did an excellent job uh, making sure that we were all uh, prepared and ready for the game. Um, and then, you know, we were there and we went through our normal routine. And, and so sometimes it's, it's, it's very strange, but, um, you know, you just come out maybe and, and, and a few things go, go wrong. Um, and maybe it wasn't even due to, a, a, to, a, to a, an attitude problem um, or, or something that was, you know, we weren't right emotionally. I don't think that was the case either because we responded well and started to play great defense. But uh, sometimes those things happen and they're almost inexplicable. Yeah, I thought um, after that start, the defense really was yeah. great. I mean, you were given a number of short fields uh, to defend because of obviously some some significant turnover problems on the other side of the ball, and, and you guys held up really well in those circumstances. Yeah, and I mean, that's something we've, we've really been focusing on all year and, and all, all offseason and, uh, and to this point. And, you know, our offense had really taken care of us, uh, you know, this year, and, 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 we, and we felt that – we knew at some point we needed to. We we're gonna have to pick them up, and uh, and that that just so happened to be uh, this past Saturday. And unfortunately, we we couldn't quite do it enough. Um, and that's something we're working, uh, you know, even harder on to to make sure we rectify. We don't want to. We don't ever want to leave our offense hanging. You know, it's on to Navy, one of the uh, one of the really important partners for 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 this university, and 
and Notre Dame football. And I know people, you know, I'm running into people saying to me, well, you, you, you played the Georgia Tech option so well, you know, that, that, that foreshadows great things against Navy. But I know from talking to Coach, these are very different offenses, notwithstanding that both are option offenses. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that I think they both come from the same coaching tree, which is where they draw, you know, the similarities. Uh, you know, Paul Johnson had uh, had had Navy's head coach. I won't try to butcher his uh, his last name. Um, which it's a new, uh, do, you, do you do you know how to do it? I, hey, don't put me on the spot. Man. Just, just keep going. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. The uh, but really, the, you know, the, so he he coached for for Coach Johnson, and so um, he he's got some different formations and some different ways of attacking a defense, um, which which are unique to Navy, and uh, and so I think that. With their with their players and the way that they play offense and, and football, um, it really fits their it fits their scheme. So they're they're going to be a, an incredible challenge and something that we're really working hard on, making sure we're ready to defend. Yeah, I think you know that's my understanding too. As I say, from from spending some time with Coach talking about it, but you know Georgia Tech in essence is saying this is what we do and we're going to come out and we're going to out execute you and, and go at you. Navy takes advantage of sort of the athletes it has, right? Really smart kids, yeah. very dedicated, going to execute perfectly to give you so many different ways of running the same play, so many different formations and motions into a play that you you really got to stay with your keys. Yeah, exactly. It's almost, you know, Georgia Tech was almost like the line from uh, from Remember the Titans where, you know, split veer like Novocaine, just give it time, <laughs> always works. That's That was really what, they, what they're about. And um, and really, Navy was, was is, a, is a little bit different in that they'll pick and poke at you. They'll, they'll do, you know, they'll get into this formation, they'll get into that formation, they'll get into, the, you know, they'll run this play, then, then, then another, and they'll look in each time and see how you play it. And so um, it's, it's really, it's a fun game um, as, a, as a defensive player because you always have to be thinking about how they're going to attack you when they see you in this look, what are they going to do, um, and try to be able to, uh, you know, be ready to respond, uh, you know, on the fly, really. And, and, and game, you know, in the game adjustments are so critical against a team um, like Navy and that they're, they're so smart, they're so well coached. And the one thing that, you, you always, that you, 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 people don't really understand until you have played Navy is that their, their, their athletes, you know, those men, they will fight harder and longer than anyone else in the country. And that's, that's really the hardest part about this game is, is trying to match that intensity, trying to match that, that will to win. Um, and these are going to, you know, they're going to be commission officers, officers in the Navy. And, and that makes it, you know, it makes it an incredible challenge and, and something we really look forward to every year. Yeah. Great respect between the teams. I love the tradition of, of joining each other for the alma maters at the end of the game. Yeah. It's, it really is special. And, um, you know, I remember, I remember, you know, vividly last year, <clears throat> their, uh, their fullback and I, uh, you know, I, I broke my leg in the, in the game last year for the listeners that might not know. Uh, but I made sure that I got out there at the end of the game. I, you know, I shook their fullback's hand, uh, who I had, I had met many, many times <laughs> during that game uh, in some physical fashions and, you know, looked him in the eye, said thank you for his service. And, and you know, he, he thanked me. And, and we stood there with, you know, with our hands over our heart and did the, you know, the Navy alma mater, which was one of my, my, my favorite memories from, you know, from my playing, playing days here at Notre Dame. And, um, you know, we have a tremendous amount of respect for their program, for their, for their players. And, and the way they play football and the way they, the way they conduct their lives. Last year's game was a turning point for the team and for you, obviously. Yeah. Uh, in, in so many ways, it, it, it marked a real shift in our season. Um, does that play any role going into the game? You look back, you think about it, get extra motivation from it or not? Uh, you know, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like someone uh, maliciously tried to, to injure me. So I, I never held any hard feelings against, uh, against the player from Navy that, that happened to land on my ankle in an in a, in a inopportune way. Um, and I think that it's something that we, we, we have, you know, we kind of look back at and maybe it was a changing point. And there were a lot of different variables that kind of went into that, uh, went into us, you know, and our, and our, our little skid there at the end. Um, and so for us, it's, it's just about making sure we're playing assignment correct football. Um, you know, there were a lot of plays from that game that we've looked at uh, that we need to be better at um, and a lot of things that we need to improve on uh, this year. So that's really what we're looking at. I, I haven't thought too much about, uh, about the injury. I actually, it was, it was interesting. I, I, I had never watched it on our version of the, of the, of the tape. Uh, so I saw that for the first time the other day, which was, uh, which was an interesting little, little viewing experience. <laughs> What I remember from that uh, from that experience was you trying to get back in the game yeah. on, a, on a broken ankle, yeah. Jog, jogging up and down on the sidelines like you were going to shake it off. Yeah, I thought I thought I could. Um, you know, I figured if they just taped it 
you know, well enough, I would be okay. And I originally thought, oh, okay, it's just a sprained ankle um, that, you know, it's just going to hurt really bad. It's a high ankle sprain. Um, and so I'm running around the sideline. They tape it up, and I'm I'm jogging up and down. They tell me I have to do 20 calf raises if I want to go back in the game. I do 20 single leg calf <laughs> raises on a dislocated and broken leg. Um, and then and then they're like, all right, I need you to use what you were talking about. Is I need I needed to show them that I could cut off my left and right foot. So I did that, and I'm like, wow, this really hurts. <laughs> and uh, I didn't I didn't quite realize that it was broken. Um, and and it was coming out of place until I was coaching up. Um, my my uh, you know my my backup Niles Morgan on the sideline and it continued to fall out in and out of place and I said you know this is probably bad we should probably go get an X-ray um, but yeah that's I, I'm I'm slightly stubborn uh, when I'm yeah. when I'm in the game well I guess. nice self diagnosis eventually yeah, yeah, I, think, I was, figured it out it just yeah, you ordered your own X-ray that's a <laughs> it took a, it took some time <laughs> that's a good thing yeah you said we had a good week of practice so for for our viewers and listeners what makes a good week of practice. Oh, well, there's, there's, there's a lot of things going to that. I think um, the amount of extra work guys are putting in, what they're doing um, in the film room, uh, what they're doing after practice, if they're, they're taking some extra cut blocks, if they're doing some extra tackling work, if they're, you know, whatever it may be that they need to improve on. Um, that, I think that's so, you know, that's critically important, especially in a week like Navy. So when, you know, when looking at like our preparation, how it's gone, um, I, I look at things like that and how many guys are out there still, you know, 20, 30 minutes after practice, just doing stuff on their own and, and who I see in the film room or in the training room early. Um, I think, you know, it's been really good. And then also, um, you know, during the practice, I feel we have been, f we've really been flying around. It, it's, it's, uh, it seems like a, it's a possessed, um, you know, mindset. We, we're, we're, we're obsessed about winning. Um, and, and, we, and we really want to make sure we're, we're prepared in, in each and every way for this game. And, and guys are, you know, making sure that guy, other people that can count on them uh, to do their job because this is an assignment game. Um, and that's really what I think goes into a great prep, prep for Navy. Well, just as Navy was a turning point in the season last year, I've got a feeling it'll be a turning point <laughs> this year in the other direction. Thank you really, very much. Really give us the platform for, for a great second half of the season. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday, and yeah. uh, let's take a break, and we'll come back with our guests. Excited for it. Let's do it.